All right. Hey, everybody, and welcome back. My name is Sue, and I'm from OML Embroidery. And yes, I'm going live a couple minutes early. It just gives everyone a minute or two because I don't, I don't do the music stuff. You know, we can have a little chat before we get started. Uh, this is what we're working on today, and I'm going to show you guys the um, trick to it to make it look like it was pieced all on the sewing machine. So it's awesome. Cindy King, hi OML gang, working and listening. Yeah, Susan Weehee, waves, waves for sure. Leah, my first midweek live in a good time, in a long time. Good to be here. Well, we're happy you're here too, for sure. For sure. So Today, this is our design. You guys are going to love it. Now, if you look carefully on most of them, this is a perfect example, this one here. You really can't tell which one was the first and last one to do, right? There's Lynn. Hello, Lynn. Now, I don't know if um, Mama Brown, Santa, Santa Mom is watching today, but it's her birthday. So we can say, happy birthday, mom. Um, I hope you have a wonderful day for sure. Just got back from playing golf. <laughs> First time since spring. It's too hot down here in Florida to play in the summer. <laughs> yeah, well, I burn, so uh, you don't see me out at all <laughs> in the summer particularly. Um, so yeah, happy birthday, mom. Hope you have a wonderful day. Um, I don't know if she's watching today, but if she is, or if she watches the replay, hi, Grandma. Grandma, Don's grandma is there at uh, Mama Brown's house. So, hello. I hope you guys enjoy this. Also, I'd like to give a shout out to my friend Lynn. My friend Lynn, who took us to London, or took Don to London today to pick up a desk for me for sewing at night. You guys know that Don has a job and he's gone. And uh, I've been sewing upstairs with a really crappity crap crap table. So I went all out and got a kangaroo one. So eh, it's going to be nice. So would you guys, before we get started, would you guys like to see what I'm working on, the next thing to be released. Because it's kind of cool. It's another one of those, um, you can see a shadow, that's all you're going to see. Um, it's, a, it's a block, traditional block. However, it's made modern. And it is also made, are you guys ready for this? Specifically for to look great with variegated thread. So that's something that we all love. You can't always use it, but you can on this one. So ready? One, two, there it is. So obviously I don't have them sewn together yet, but this is an old traditional style, um, disappearing card trick it's called and a quilting one, and I've got a couple of different ones, but it's all variegated thread. All of the quilting is in variegated thread. You can kind of see it. Um, and all of these squares, the outline, are the colors that make up the uh, variegated thread. So it all matches. I was digging through my stash and I found this and I thought that is perfect. So this block's easy to do. Uh, so is this one. There's only four little appliques and the rest is stitching. Uh, you have to change the colors a couple times, but you can do whatever you want on it. This one straight through only one trim. So uh, I think this will be a lot of fun. So I'm going to keep stitching. I have a couple of different ones to do with different patterns on it, but that is, I think, by far... Can you see it now? Yeah, you can. Uh, my favorite block. Isn't that pretty? Lots and lots of detail in it. And it's a quick stitch too. So there, we'll do this one. 
So I, I'm pretty sure this is my favorite. Isn't that beautiful with the variegated thread? So start digging out your variegated thread and pick up your best ones because it looks gorgeous. Okay, enough of that. Enough of that. We are, hi Karina. We are going to get started on this. Uh, Judy Quilt says my favorite too. Um, the thread one is awesome. Yeah, that one is variegated thread, the same as I used in the first one. And you just sit, sit and watch it stitch out and it's gorgeous. It does, it's, it's beautiful. So anyways, that'll be released hopefully this weekend. I got to play with my desk and get it all set up for my apparently really heavy sewing machine. So I'll figure it out. This is what we're working on, and I'm going to show you guys the fabric. I'm not doing Christmas. I am going to do, look at this, bees and honey. Honey and bees. So I want contrasting. So that's why I picked the, the black with it. And this is going to be my fussy cut, which is just a, happens to be uh, uh, an extra, I guess, piece. And this is almost in the middle. And I'm going to make a wild guess that it's going to work. And I love it. Now, I was getting bored while I was waiting. <laughs> Susan Weehy, I'm a beekeeper. Yeah, I love this fabric. I love this fabric. Um, I was getting bored, so I accidentally started. So it was an accident. So let's go over to the machine and I'll show you guys where I am. Don't worry, I didn't do a whole lot. I was just like, I just sat down and I started. And I went, hey, wait a minute. It's, it's supposed to be for the show. So anyways, cutaway, stabilizer. I like the no-show mesh. I'm doing the eight by eight hoop. It comes in a whole bunch of different sizes. Uh, you do your placement stitch, then you put your batting down, stitch it down, trim. There's no batting. The, the batting is only under this part. Put your fabric down and it's going to stitch the fabric down, but also at the same time, no color break, it's going to stitch the placement for our um, hexagon. Gail, I really, I'm really enjoying making this. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun, but I'm going to show you guys the, the trick to it. So when I do this, I have my finger on kind of where the middle of the flower is that I want to showcase and the middle of the hexagon ish. And you can see where the needle is, where it's going to kind of start. So I might want to move it up a little bit. You could also use your scan and cut. That's a whole lot easier. Um, and you'll get it absolutely perfect. I'm not worried about perfection. I don't want any of these white ones in here. I don't mind this one, but I don't want the white ones because it's not going to stand out. And hopefully the leaves are in. So I'm going to say okay to that. Now, it's only a single stitch going through. So if you don't like it, then um, it's easy to pick out. So love it there. There, got those leaves in. That'll be covered up. Oh, I forgot about that side, though. Oh, well, that's okay. It's not perfect, but you still get the idea. The main focus is going to be um, that. You see? It's hard to see with the yellow. I'm going to break my own rules, and I'm going to trim in place. Ha! <laughs> because these are going to get covered up, so I'm just going to quickly do it. I don't normally do this because I prefer to do it properly, but it's that kind of a day today. I'm just going to wing it. So yeah, that's pretty good placement. The focal point is on the sunflowers. So you got to love that. So I'm not sure how the black background is going to look, but it's what we're doing. So on the first half hexagon that's making up our swirls, we are going to stitch the placement line. So this 
this part is where the tricks are. The tr there's two two tricks. So it is going to give us the position, which is perfect. Oh, the sunflower looks good. And this is all folded fabric. The whole outside of it is folded fabric. So when you do folded fabric, you put your fabric face down because we're going to fold it, right? And if you can't remember which way of doing it, just do it do a dry run as i say just do a dry run it's easy um and for this one for the first one leave a little bit extra fabric more than you would normally do um making sure though that it still covers it so i just did a quick spot check and i'll show you why in a minute so we're gonna stitch this down but we're only gonna stitch halfway Again, this is the key to the whole thing, and it's awesome. So just halfway, just halfway, that's it. Now we are gonna fold it back, because it is folded fabric and it would look terrible like this. So we are gonna fold it back. I'm gonna switch cameras. We are gonna fold it back. And what we wanna do is make a nice crease, but carry the crease on all the way down. So we're not gonna be stitching this part, but we want it to be as straight as you can. And that's why I said leave some extra. It'll just make sure everything holds nicely. So that looks pretty good. Now, all we're gonna do right here is stitch down the top half and then trim the one corner. And we will come back to this one. We're, we're not done with it. We will come back to it. So you have to trim on this one. There's no trim cheating uh, because they're all overlapping. So see how much I left? Half an inch. Just makes it nicer to, to be able to do it that way. Now you can trim the top if you want or halfway if you want. Just be careful because you wouldn't want to... Uh, you know cut this incorrectly you do have the placement line underneath but i think you should just leave it if you have a little iron this would be fantastic to use so that's our first flip and fold now we're going to do the next one placement and i'm going to use opposite colors so all i did to to figure out my sizes is I just measured how big these pieces were and just made it a little bit bigger. So now we're going to do the dark one. Oh, I really do like that sunflower. Could have maybe been turned around, but we can do that after. So placement and we're doing flip and fold. Now you don't have to worry about this one at all. This is a regular flip and fold. The only one that is a little different is the first one. That's it. That is it. So just single stitch and then wait till it does its dance. I guess I can move in a little bit now so you guys can see it better. And flip and fold. Ah, oh, that's gonna look cute. See the nice high contrast? Love it. So I like to give it a good crease. Even better if you can iron it. I like it a lot better. Uh, it's nice to have a plain background too. So don't get your fingers in the way. Perfect. That's all you need. And no trim cheating. No trim cheating. You can't trim cheat. You have to, you have to trim it. So I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna kind of cheat though. Half cheat and do it how I say never to do it, but I'm doing it anyways, just quickly. These, these will all be covered up by satin stitches. So, and I'm having a really good trimming day. So now that I've said it, I probably won't. Um, so I'm just going to keep rolling with it. So you can get back there. Now we're doing opposite. So this one is going to be a gold one that we want to put down. So that is the outline placement. So we know where we're going. 
and the fabric is gonna go say it with me face down in the opposite direction that you know so when you fold it it's right perfect so everyone following along everyone following along i hope so this one is really a lot of fun to stitch you guys you know will be surprised a little bit at how fast and easy it goes together and you can really 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 play with different fabrics these are all layer cakes i've used them before um it just really works with i wanted to do something other than christmas and halloween and bees that's usually my next call because <laughs> i like it so Hmm. We can see the swirlies coming along just dandy. I really like this one so far. So let's move the camera out again. And we can do a quick trim. Just a lickety split for this one. It's pretty basic shape, so you don't really, there's no fancy curves or anything like that. And if you're doing it this way, and you don't like how it's um, coming out, then by all means, go to your desk. So this one is a black one. So we've got yellow, black, yellow, and black with the golden bees. I love it. Placement. Get your fabric ready. Did you use five in a square in the middle? If not, what size is, is it? I had a scrap piece, but you could use a charm square um, for this one. Remember, it comes in all different sizes, so it would depend on what size you're stitching. Um, but this one would definitely, this is the eight by eight. It would definitely be a charm square. Will fit perfectly. A little bit extra, but that never hurt anybody. It's awesome. So, okay, there we go. I I usually do the 8x8 eight eight size because I just find it's a really good size to stitch. It has enough detail without being, you know, super time consuming. And I like that for sure. See, that's looking good. The black and uh, gold or yellow is fantastic. So I'm just going to do a quick trim again. And we have one more. And then we're going to do our final thing that makes it look like it is just sewing. So it's... Um, it's cool. You don't have to tell anyone that you did it on the uh, embroidery machine. They won't know. All right. So we need a yellow. And I seem to be missing the last cut piece. Oh, no. Oh, no. Did I drop it? Did I leave it? What did I do? Ooh. Okay. Everyone pause for a second. I can't find it. Nope, it's not there. Nope. Um, it's the black bees. Okay, not panicking. Okay, got a piece. I don't know where it went. So, that's fun. <laughs> Always on the live, right? So again, folded fabric. Makes it look awesome. Any questions with... Um, Susan Wee, he says, I, I have a bee charm pack. Yeah, it'll work. Oh, I knocked it down. That's what I did. Oh, well. While Sue is looking, what projects are y'all working on? Well, I showed you what I've been working on. Um, but yeah, post them in the OML Embroidery uh, University Facebook group and uh, keep us keep us apprised to what you're doing. I'm going to have to get the team testers going again. I'm uh, I'm having a hard time keeping up with myself. Stitching and 
all that kind of stuff. The creation is going well. It's the stitching that is taking up time. But what are you going to do? So quick trim. And before we stitch the last one, this is where the trick happens. Excuse my arm in front of the camera while I cheat trim, lazy trim. I don't know what you want to call it. Just don't do it. <laughs> I normally don't. But we have to take this part and we have to fold it back just to where it was stitched. So you see what I'm doing here? Now it doesn't have to be folded completely tight or anything like that. We do want it out of the way. So you can see where I'm going on this. It's, it's uh, really good. It looks fantastic. So we're just holding it out of the way and let's do this. So once that's out of the way, and that's the last trick. So sew half of it and then change on the way back and move it out of the way. So isn't that cool? Easy peasy lemon squeezy. So here's another leftover from um, hexagons, <laughs> as you can see. So I'm just going to trim it up. It's because I lost the piece that I had. Now, uh, what I have to do, this is such an irregular piece. I want to make sure that if it goes like, yeah, it will. I hope it'll cover properly. That is the only thing. So now it's okay to have an overlap here. It's not going to stitch onto that. And make sure you put it the right way. That was close. That could have been trouble. So that should work perfectly, hopefully. And we should have coverage. I think we'll be okay. If not, then I'll be doing the picky picky thing. That's fine. Phew, I know, I know, right? This isn't the piece I initially had. So look, it didn't stitch into the yellow at all. And it's only got to go here, so let's fold it, plenty of room, rock and roll. There we go. So I want a nice fold on it. And then we're just going to stitch it down and trim like we normally do. And then we'll finish all the, uh, the last step to making this look like it was stitched with a sewing machine. So good use for scraps too, especially in smaller sizes. So when you trim here, make sure you're not cutting your first block piece. So just be a little careful of that. I hadn't done it yet, but it could happen very easily. So just kind of be aware of that. So now this is where we're at. Now we are going to take the tape off of this. It's being sticky. And this is why we have the fold all the way down. Try to make it as straight as you can. And I am going to tape it just because I want it to be uh, really nice. But look at that. Isn't that perfect? How easy is that to do? Uh, I think. And now it's going to stitch it down. And it leaves us with a little hole here, but don't worry, we are going to fix that momentarily. Okay, so now that we have that part cut, or stitched, don't worry about this, we're going to fix it. We're going to stitch it down right in a second. We can cut this last side. Doesn't that look good though with the fold all the way across like that? I was like, wow. Perfect. Yeah, I like it. So I am going to change the thread to a little bit of actual gold. So gold metallic thread, because I want to bling it up just a little bit. And this is where we're stitching the detail work. And it's just a simple back stitch. 
but the first thing it's going to do with the back stitch is close up this little area here so while you're stitching the detail it's uh finishing your patchwork which i kind of thought was cool and there you go so we can watch this and uh i'll zoom right in here and there we go and it should be perfect and you should not be able to tell I just hold my breath a little bit there. Isn't that awesome? Looks the same as the rest of them. Little bit of space. I'm so happy with that. I'm so happy. So I was typing no. I'm doing great today. Almost had to get the seam ripper out. Yeah. Nah. Nah. Seam rippers happen. I, I never worry about it for sure 89 watching oh so um i want you guys to hop on over to oml embroidery and pick up this design and stitch it with your favorite fabrics um it does not have to be contrasting fabric i just happen to think it looks best i think it's cool we forgot to see about the bobbin. Yeah, I know. I know. I don't even know if I'm playing bobbin chicken or what. So, looks good. Looks good. I love how the fold turns out back there. It's nice and bright. So what a super fun design. Um, so far, this is one of my favorites. I think the disappearing card trick one is right up there too but I really like this one it's easy to do and it looks like perfect absolutely perfect so it comes in a ton of sizes so no matter what hoop you have you can do it so that just lined all of them the same as the first one Ooh, it shows up nicely Perfect. So then we have a little bit more quilting to do in the middle. What metallic thread are you using? Well, Wanda, I always use Kingstar metallic thread because it works and I love it. I, I absolutely love it. Oh, stars. Oh, this is my tester one. That's why I'm going to do gold around the outside. A little more bling. Uh, in the ones that you guys will be getting, this is in a different order. Um, this is just the one I had on my machine. I forgot to send it through. Kingstar Metallic is the best metallic thread. I just use it as regular thread. And as you can see, I don't have any problems at all. Did you use batting? Yes. So the first step after you, you hoop the stabilizer is you stitch the placement line and then you put your batting down and stitch it down and trim it and then put your fabric over it. You can see there's a little bit of puff there. So, yeah. Oh, everyone, I'm going to remind everyone every once in a while, every couple of weeks to... Uh, clean their machines. I was stitching yesterday and my foot was dragging. It was down so low on everything. It was dragging um, the batting and the every... I couldn't believe it. I'm like, what is wrong? And I checked the settings on the machine and uh, it's a Luminaire, by the way, Luminaire 2, almost a 3, eventually a 3. And um, I couldn't figure out what's wrong, so I changed the needle because I probably had to do that anyways. And I cleaned out the bobbin case, which had a lot of fluffies on it, quite a bit. So if you haven't done it for a while, clean out your bobbin case, give it a good brushing, clean out all the sensors and all the detail stuff. I turned it off and I turned it on and it worked so much better. So I figured the fluffy bits were um, 
covering up the sensor for it and the foot was there was no space what a mess i was so frustrated but yeah i cleaned out my bobbin case yesterday woohoo awesome oml gang is my break time before i get back to sewing dresses for a charity well lovely oh little sip look at that gold I don't usually use, you know, bling for satin stitches, but I think B blocks require that. So you can see the swirlies. I think I did a pretty decent job on the flower in the middle. And I think if I don't stitch out another one of these, I'll make this into a mat for Beatrice because she loves all the bee stuff that's everyone calls her bee so uh, I think she'll like that very much so you can do a lot of things with it but she'll like she'll like the blingy bling on it so yeah it looks good it looks good do you still have Mickey yes Lynn still has Mickey. She is thinking about a different machine. You know, eventually she will. I need to change my needle just to finish pot holders with Insel Bright. Yeah, probably. Susan Weehee, my bees like bling. Yeah, my bee does too. My Beatrice. I think it looks nice with a little bit. Like there isn't a high contrast. It's yellow fabric and blingy gold. So it doesn't stand out if I was doing, oh, I should have used the black metallic. Darn it. I don't know why I didn't think of that. Ugh. Okay, well, next time I'll use the black metallic uh, because it is awesome. Now, we don't seem to have it here in North America. Um, Jill Scarsbrick sent it to me from, she sent me two spools from the UK and it's Kingstar Metallic and it's black and it's gorgeous. So yeah, thank you again for that. Ooh, also Debbie Mitchell uh, sent me more batting just in the nick of time. I was almost sewing pieces of batting together. It's so expensive here. So thank you Debbie Mitchell for saving the day again. For sure. So you may notice as this is stitching out that this satin stitch is really close to the bottom and same with that uh, at the top. The satin stitches are almost at the line and that will make it a whole lot easier for you guys when you sew it together because you want to sew just right at this line and you can follow it at the back. So I found it made a big difference. So it's awesome. Judy Quilt says, I can't wait to see everyone's block. I can't wait to see what fabric you guys do. Um, I'm in love with the B fabric. I, I think the contrast is perfect. Um, I like all of it. I like the fussy cutting is actually a lot of fun. I really like doing it. And it's not like a teeny tiny fussy cut. It is big enough um, in this size anyways, in the 8x8 size, that it's awesome. But you could do autumn colors, like where the yellow is. You could do pumpkins and then earthy colors around it. I think that would look gorgeous. The Christmas one was a lot of fun. I just happened to have my hands on that fabric and went, oh yeah, okay. Halloween, I mean, seriously, you could have a whole lot of fun with it. Anything goes, or you could simply do a scrappy one. So you could just scrap it up, which is uh, perfectly fine. These pieces aren't too big. And of course, when you get the hoop going smaller, the scrap pieces are smaller, so. It could be a scrap buster. So, yeah, a lot of fun. For sure, a lot of fun. Uh, I love it. Let's see. That would be pretty. I'm just looking. 
My bees like bling. Yes, yes, yes. Tulip pink. I know. Grays and red. Gail Tips is doing hers in grays and red. <coughs> that is absolutely awesome. Hi, Ronog. How are you? Glad you could make it. That's okay. You're in time for the best part. I can't wait to see what Ronog does with hers. She always has beautiful combinations for sure. Um, most of them do for sure. I'm glad you could make it for sure. Uh, Tula Pink would be great. Uh, anything Tula Pink. Have you guys seen the new one that's out? Whoa, uh, I absolutely love it. So, you know, it's a little more blingy than what I normally do, but I love it. So now, once this is stitched out, there's more um, quilting to do. And I like to put it at the end so you can decide. If you have a really complicated fussy cut in the middle, then you probably, you know, might not want it or whatever. And they all have color changes. Um, the other thing you could do with these lines, these that sewed up the part there, um, you could make them kind of match in a little bit better so they're a little more hidden. But this is just a very simple uh, quilting flower, shall we say. And it's just basic. And it is going to trim and do one more part um, because, uh, like I said, I put color changes in it. Oh, that gives it some texture. I love it. And this is the last part here. And you can change the colors to match or stand out or blend in whatever you want on it. So a little back stitch. I love that the gold shows up on the honey fabric and perfectly on the black fabric. I love it. Beatrice is going to love this. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. You can do it. I have a hard time cutting up my tulip pink fabric. Just looking at it makes it hard to cut. Yeah, Cindy, I absolutely agree. I have some and I love it. I absolutely love it. Um, if you can get your hands on char tulip pink charm squares of any kind, that kind of takes away the pain of cutting it up because they've already done it and you're just using it. That's how my brain works. That's my logic right there. But yeah, I can't wait to be able to do the Queen of Diamonds. It's English paper piecing plus regular piecing and it's absolutely gorgeous in her new fabric. I'm just so thrilled. So look at that finish. That is just about as perfect as it gets. Isn't that awesome? Happy music. All right, let's go back to my desk. Take the hoop off. And now we can take a really good look at it. Isn't that beautiful? So the swirl is really nice. The sunflower is also really nice. The, the bling is not too blingy. The quilting gives it a little bit of texture here. You can feel it, you can see it. And I think that is one of my favorite blocks with the bees. Isn't that awesome? Um, Sutai made it live. Welcome Sharon, I'm glad you could make it for sure. Um, some friends of mine are in Houston at the quilt market. I gave them a shopping list. Oh, I'm jealous. I'm so jealous for sure. So a whole lot of fun in one block. Now you could make a huge quilt. You can make a table runner. I just usually try to do a wall hanging so you guys can get, you know, the idea of what it looks like. I love the negative space here, our diamonds. That's on each side of it, not on the top and bottom. So it makes it stand out even more. Um, I love it. It is a lot of fun. Uh, I'm going to send a picture of this to um, Don because he is going to love that. How about um, 
Let's see, fall fabric. How about winter blues, like icy blue, a darker blue, a lighter blue with snowflakes, fussy cut snowflake in the center. So much you can do. Uh, you could even, for men, like if you were making a quilt for a boy, you could use, um, say, hunting fabric. So hunting fabric and a solid that matches it. Um, I think that would look stunning. And, you know, fabric with, um, let's see, like a hunting animal on it. So, so many ideas. Any theme you can think of. Um, and even for a guy, like, uh, I don't think any guy would say, gee, you know, yuck, if you made a hunting one. Motorcycles. Oh, remember Judy Quilt sent me that uh, motorcycle fabric? That would be fantastic. Um, awesome. Awesome. Beautiful throw pillows. Yeah, absolutely. So many things you can do. This was just one of the ideas that I came up with. So anything that makes you happy. And yes, you can do Tula Pink. Um, that's awesome. She has lots where you can fussy cut. So I can't wait to see what you guys do. I'm going to take this out of the hoop, trim it up, and I am going to put a picture in the OML University Facebook group so you can see the blingy bling. Um, Isabel says old trucks. Oh, yeah. I like the winter theme. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, gnomes and snowmen and everything. Yeah, anything goes. Suzanne Wood says absolutely beautiful pillows. For sure. And at this size, this is just big enough that you could put a gnome in it and you can have fun with the fussy cutting. So show me what you got, guys. Show me what you got. Different fabric. Try some different ideas. I really like the Christmas one, but I absolutely love this one. Isn't it gorgeous? I think Don is going to go, wow when he sees it, when he gets a chance to look. So, and then I'm going to sew it on my new sewing desk. Thanks again, Lynn. We always appreciate you, Lynn. And thanks everyone for watching. Head on over to omlembroidery.com and pick up this block. It is a lot of fun to stitch and it's completely versatile and you guys will love it. So, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye, everyone. Bye.